are high and lifted up. Archbishop Dominica Bierman has traveled the world for over three decades proclaiming the gospel from Zion to the nations with miracles following. She exposes the false doctrines of replacement theology and preaches restoration to the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. Because out of the ground begin to come portions and portions of Torah scrolls and portions of what the sages said and more historical information about what had happened at the time. It was absolutely uh, archaeological heaven. But the most profound thing that was found in the Gnisa room is actually the chapter 37 of the prophet Ezekiel. Now the prophet Ezekiel is the prophet of the restoration of Israel. Uh, and I'm going to read what was found here. Ezekiel 37, 21 to 28. This was found under the ground here in Metzada. Then say to them, thus says Yahweh Elohim, behold, I will take the people of Israel from among the nations where they have gone. I will gather them from every side and bring them into their own land. Is this the decree we talked about? I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel. That includes all the area of the mountains of Samaria. And one and the mountains of Judea. And one king will be king to them all. One king. They will no longer be two nations, which is the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom, and never again be divided into two kingdoms. They will never again be defiled with their idols, the detestable things, or with any of their transgressions. I will save them out of all their dwellings in which they sinned. I will purify them. Who's going to do that? I will. What did I tell you the first day? Every time you see, I will, I will, I will, I will, that's the will of the Father and He will. I will purify them. Then they will be my people and I will be their God, their Elohim. My servant David will be king over them. They will all have one shepherd. They will walk in my ordinances and observe my rulings and do them. They will live in the land that I gave to my servant Yaakov, where your ancestors lived. They will live there, they, their children, and their children's children forever. For how long? Forever. And my servant David will be their prince forever. Who is the son of David? Yeshua. The Messiah, right? He will be their prince forever. I will cut a covenant of shalom with them. What does it mean, shalom? Shalom comes from the word shalem, which means complete, entire, nothing lacking, nothing missing, nothing broken. In other words, I'm going to cut a covenant that they will be entirely well. They will have not one portion of the land missing. They will have no poverty. They will have no sickness. They will be in complete, entire well-being. That's an amazing covenant, the covenant of shalom. It will be an everlasting covenant. Again, look at all these words again. Everlasting, forever, I will, I will. Do you get it? Yes. It's kind of hard to believe that anybody would miss it, really. <laughs> Isn't it? So it will be an everlasting covenant with them. I will give to them. I will multiply them. I will set up my sanctuary among them forever. My dwelling place will be over them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Then the nations will know that I am Yahweh who sanctifies Israel when my sanctuary is in their midst forever. So when will the nations fear Yah? When Israel is restored. In other words, the restoration of Israel is the key for the full salvation of the nations. In other words, if Israel is in disrepair, Israel is not restored, and everybody's saying, Oh, the Messiah is about to come back, and we all feel like, boy, he's around the corner, you know, it may be coming back tomorrow. I can tell you that it says in Acts chapter 3, and I mentioned it at the welcome meeting, 
I said that the heavens must retain the Messiah until the restoration of all things by which was spoken from the prophets of old. So I want you to keep that in mind. I also believe Yeshua is coming really back soon, but I also know that the heavens must retain him until Israel is restored. And therefore we are here to stay until that happens. And so all of those people that are going to go tomorrow to a high mountain somewhere, maybe they even will come to the desert of Judea, or they may even try to go to the Temple Mount dressed in white garments and wait for the rapture to happen right then and there for them, they're wasting their time. Because we have to be working and occupying until He comes. We need to be working for the restoration of Israel because without the restoration of Israel, the nations will not fear the name of Yahweh. So there is a lot of things that we will have to still see happen before He returns. Now I know we are at the age of Zoom and internet and online and robots and you name what, and even some people say post post-humanism, going to transhumanism. So things are very, very wicked right now. Enough for Yahweh to come and destroy all of the nations. I believe that He's keeping the nation still because we're standing in the gap, but there is going to be judgment. Let me explain something. Before the wrath of God is poured out, that it will, will wipe, wipe out a large portion of humanity and of the earth, there is going to be judgments. That's not yet the wrath of Yah, that's judgment. And like Hurricane Ian, and I told you that I believe it was a judgment because the abortion clinics are still open in Florida and because the neo-Nazis are allowed to do parades flying their flags. I truly believe that Yah simply judged. And now some people are coming and saying the Chinese sent the storm. Now I'm gonna tell you something, even if the Chinese sent the storm, I can tell you that even that is in the hands of Yah. We need to understand that even when we say the Chinese sent the storm and the Chinese sent the plague, I agree, maybe the Chinese sent the plague when I'm talking about the CCP, okay? I'm not talking about the poor people of China that are under that horrendous regime, but I'm talking about the Communistic Party of China. They are doing a lot of manipulations and wicked things. I'm not saying they're not doing. I'm just saying that even that is in the hands of Yah. I'm just saying that when evil and wickedness succeeds, it means that those that were supposed to stop the wickedness are playing dead. And we're not here to play dead. We are here to fight alongside Yah and alongside the covenanted people of Israel that are fighting for the decree of the King of Kings to come to pass in the land of Israel. Hallelujah. And as we do that, we can expect as we're fighting for the restoration of Israel, we can expect that in your nations, there will be people that will come to the fear of Yahweh and they will get saved and they will get redeemed. It will not be any more the salvations that we've seen like, you know, just a mental ascent to the Messiah. It will be a radical redemption, a radical salvation that people are born again in order to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, not just to go back home and continue their lives as usual, having a fire insurance. The days are over for that. Now we are in the days of the kingdom. We are in the days, as I said, in the Mount of Olives, where we need to bring the kingdom down. We need to have His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, I'm going to go back to this about the kingdom. Would Yeshua ask us to pray that prayer if it wouldn't be possible? Now let's think about it because we become so religious sometimes that we just listen to those scriptures and it becomes nothing but a tradition. Now let's think about it as a living word for a moment. Would Yeshua say to the Jewish apostles of the time, to the Jewish disciples of the time, this is the way you should pray. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So if it is not possible, so what are we praying this for? What are we praying this for to feel good about ourselves? Are we praying this for to feel really religious? Or are we actually praying to see the kingdom break into earth? I think you need to settle it within yourselves right now and everybody that's listening to, to me today. Because many people are going and say, oh, give us revival. I said, really? Well, let me tell you that revival is the divine attack of God on society. It's the divine attack of God on this new world order. It's the divine attack of Elohim on this wickedness that is happening right now here on earth. 
Now I've said it many, many times. Yeshua died on this tree in Calvary and he's not a loser. He's not going to lose all of the nations because the church has been playing dead. But the thing is that while it is steeped in that replacement theology that separates her from Israel and the covenant of Yah for Israel, separates them from the Torah of Israel and the feasts of Yahweh and all of these things, then what happens is that the church has no power, no glory to be able to impact this society and make a difference in this society. The only way to make a difference is with the glory of Yah. And the prophet Habakkuk says, that the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh shall cover the earth like the waters cover the sea. It says the knowledge of the glory. What I'm giving you today is the knowledge of the glory. Because when you possess the knowledge of the glory, the glory follows the knowledge of the glory. Because knowledge of the glory is knowing Yahweh, knowing His purposes, knowing His will, knowing His word, knowing His presence, knowing His spirit. That's a knowledge of the glory. Knowing His plan, knowing His mysteries. It's time, beloveds, to begin to unravel the mysteries. It says, it is the glory of Elohim to conceal a matter, but it's the glory of kings to search it out. The word says that we are royal priesthood and a holy nation. It says that we are kings and priests unto Yahweh, and therefore it is to our glory to search it out. It's to our glory to unravel the mysteries of the kingdom. It's to our glory to know what are the decrees of the king, and it's to our glory to align ourselves with the decrees of the king, especially when it's about Israel. Now, I started talking in the former episode, and I said, is it true that Masada will never fall again? Is it true that Israel will never fall again? Is that true? That's the question. Is it true? Can we stand with it? Can we fight for it? Can we stand with Israel when Israel cannot stand for herself? I'm going to read from Amos 9, verse 11 to 15. Let's see if it's true. If it's true that we can stand with Israel so it will not fall again like we're standing in Masada and with the paratroopers that say Masada will never fall again. Let's, let's see if it's true. In that day, I will raise up David's fallen sukkah. I will restore its breaches, raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old. Say as in the days of old. All the things that the prophets of old prophesied, right? So they may possess the remnant of Edom. Edom is over there on the Red Sea in the south where the city of Eilat is, Edom. And all the nations that are called by my name, hold on. I know that there is only one nation that's called by his name, Israel. So how can he say that about the nations that are called by his name? Here is the mystery of why the United Nations for Israel was born. It was born based on that promise in Zechariah 2 where it says that many nations will join Yahweh in that day and will become his people. In other words, sheep nations. Say with me, sheep nations. Here you go. So can we believe for sheep nations? Can we believe that Israel will not fall? Yes, we can, because it is in the scriptures by decree. And so it says that it is a declaration, say declaration, declaration, decree, that means irrevocable. It is a declaration of Yahweh, the one who will do this. Behold, days are soon coming. It is a declaration of Yahweh. When the plowman will overtake the reaper and the one treading grapes, the one sowing seed, we're going to sow seed in the land. We're going to sow a whole orchard. The mountains will drip sweet wine and all the hills will melt over. Yes, I will restore the captivity of my people Israel. Can you say it with me? Yes, yes. I will restore the captivity of my people Israel. They will rebuild the desolated cities. Did you see some cities rebuilt lately? All those were desolated. They were desolated until the 19th century, completely desolated. And here you see cities built up again. And as we move throughout Israel, you're gonna see many, many cities that have been restored and rebuilt. In other words, we are at this time. 
We need to know at what time we are. We are at this time where the cities are being rebuilt, the desolated cities. They will rebuild desolated cities and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and drink their wines. There are vineyards all over the area of Jerusalem and Samaria and even in the desert. You saw vineyards even in the desert of Judea. They will also make gardens and we're going to make one garden like that in Samaria. They will also make gardens and eat their fruit. So next year when you come, we can eat some fruit. Amen. Yes, I will plant them on their land. Whose land? Their land. And they will never again be plucked up out of their land that I given to them. How, how much of never again do we need to understand? Yahweh, your Elohim, has said it. In other words, when we said that we're standing with Israel, even when Israel can stand for herself, we're on sure ground. When we're saying that we're turning nations into sheep nations, one person at a time, we're standing on sure ground. There's going to be nations that are being, going to be called by the name of Yahweh. In other words, there's going to be redeemed nations. Those are the sheep nations that will join Israel at the time. Now, Jeremiah 50, verse 4 and 5. In those days and at that time, can you say it's now, please? I mean, I already showed you when the timing is. I showed you from Amos 9 that it's when the cities are getting rebuilt and desolated cities are getting this and vineyards are being planted. So when it says in those days and at that time, it's talking about our times. Say our times, please. Our time. It is a declaration of Yahweh. Who is declaring? Yahweh, again a decree of the king. The children of Israel will come together with the children of Judah weeping as they come and will seek Yahweh their Elohim, they will ask about Zion, the way, here are their faces. Come, they will join themselves to Adonai in an everlasting covenant and will never be forgotten. And you're going to see when we go to Samaria, these people that are against all odds, planting, establishing, against all the politics, against all the United Nations, against all of the hostility even of their own government and their own police, these people have bound themselves to Yahweh in the covenant. They may not know Yeshua yet. I say yet. They may not know Yeshua yet, but they know the land covenant and they bound themselves to Yahweh in the covenant. In other words, we are willing to lose our lives and settle our land. Hallelujah. But now, thus says Yahweh your Creator, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear. So you, you want to bless somebody? When you see all these people in Israel, tell them, do not fear. That's right, do not fear. Fear Yah only. For I have redeemed you. I've called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched. Nor will the flame burn you. For I am Yahweh, your Elohim, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I've given Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Sheba in your place. And that was, he, he gives nations in place of Israel, any nation that rises against us. Since you are precious in my sight, since you're honored and I love you. So anybody that comes and says, well, God is done away with Israel and he doesn't love them and those Jews are all uh, in rebellion and they do not recognize Yeshua and uh, oh, Jesus Christ better um, or whatever. You tell them, it's written here, since you are honored and I love you, I will give other men in your place and other peoples in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name and whom I have created for my glory. You want to pray? Pray these scriptures. Bring them from afar. All of them that are called by your name. Hallelujah. All of them that you created for your glory. Begin to pray for Israel like 
like Israel needs you to pray for her, not just, you know, from our heads, whom I formed and even whom I've made. Even from eternity, I am he, and there is none who can deliver out of my hand. Ha, ha, ha. None that can deliver out of my hand. I act and who can reverse it? Do not call to mind the former things or ponder things of the past. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. And he has made them. I mean, we're here verbatim in the natural, but there's also the wilderness of the United Nations not the United Nations for Israel, of course, but the wilderness of the political of the nations and the new world order and these globalists. There's a wilderness there, but he says he will make a road. He said he will make a way so that his decrees can come to pass. So never think that Satan is stronger than Yahweh. That is, I believe, to be honest with you, I don't think there is any sin bigger than that. To believe that wickedness is stronger than Yahweh and uh, than goodness, I, I, I'm, I'm not willing to be there. And so any time that you see that the, this, 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 you know, demonic principalities are lying and are showing all this terrible news and everything that's happened, it's actually to convince the people that it's no use to do anything about it. It's no use to rise up and, and speak the truth. It's no use to fight for the covenant. Why? Because the devil is too strong. The new world order is too strong. The post-humanists are too strong. The transhumanists are too strong. That is absolutely nonsense because Yahweh said, I act and who can reverse it? Amen. I am even, even me, I'm the one who wipes out your transgressions for my own sake and I will not remember your sins. He's telling Israel, saying, I'm wiping out your transgressions. It is not like he is ignoring the transgressions. He's wiping out the transgressions and not remembering the sins for the sake of his covenant, for the sake of his holy name. Of course, yes, every Jew will need to recognize Yeshua and there will be a day of great visitation where the spirit of grace and supplication is going to fall in Jerusalem and they will recognize Yeshua. And throughout the land of Israel, there is thousands of Jews that are being saved every year. We have lots of Jews, you know, right now so many congregations, some of the congregations are underground, some of them are above ground, some of them are house congregations, some of them are known congregations, but every day Israelis are joining these congregations. And so this is happening. I want to dispel a particular lie before I finish here today. Do you remember in Matthew 27, 25, when the mob that was hired by the, by the apostate high priest Caiaphas to cry out for the execution of the Messiah, that mob, not the disciples that were following him through the Galilee, and uh, when we talk in the Galilee, we will talk about about 20,000 people were following him at all times, not the thousands of people that were following. They were not the ones screaming. There was a mob that was much smaller than that, and this is what they screamed. All the people answered and said, His blood be on us and our children. And since then we think, oh, well, for sure, Israel is under a curse and will never come out of that curse. Now, I'm going to give a little twist to this particular scripture. When, if I would say, let the blood of Yeshua be on me and my children, what am I declaring? Salvation. That's right, because Yeshua was not a murderer. Yeshua was a sacrifice. So if we say, let his blood be on us and our children, though they meant it for evil, according to the mob, it really means let salvation come upon us and upon our children. Every time, don't we say, the blood of Yeshua, I claim the blood, let the blood be on me, I put the blood, right? Because everything needed to be sprinkled by the blood. So we declare that as a prophetic statement for ourselves. Well, I know they declare it so that Yeshua could be executed. 
But the truth is that even that is from Yah. Why? Because without that, the Messiah would have not sacri been sacrificed and he would have not paid for sins and you wouldn't be sitting here today. So we can be thankful that he used that wicked mob over there hired by the high priest to, you know, cry that. So the question is, do we have blood guilt in Israel? Yes, we do. We have aborted a lot of babies. And yes, there's going to be a time when the Jewish people are going to recognize the Messiah whom we have pierced and we will weep for him like for an only son because we've rejected him. All these things are true. But all of these things do not negate the fact that Yahweh is going to keep his covenant with Israel. And in that sense, Israel shall never fall again. Now, let's take a look. He's going to restore Israel for the sake of his holy name. When we jumped all the way to Zechariah 2, which is actually the scriptures for the United Nations for Israel, we see somebody that is actually measuring Jerusalem. And so I said, where are you going? And he said to me, it was an angel, to measure Jerusalem, to see how wide it is and how long it is. And behold, the angel who was speaking with me was going out and another angel was coming out to meet him and said to him, run, speak to that young man saying, Jerusalem will be inhabited without walls because of the multitude of men and cattle with it. You've been in Jerusalem. There's a lot of neighborhoods outside of the walls of Jerusalem. So this is already coming to pass right now. It's come to pass right now. And then it says, For I declare Yahweh will be a wall of fire around her and I will be the glory in her midst. And then it goes ahead and it talks about escape, escape Jerusalem. And then it goes and it says this, for behold, I'm coming and I will dwell in your midst, declares Yahweh. Many nations will join themselves to the Lord in that day and will become my people. Then I will dwell in your midst and you will know that Yahweh Sevaot has sent me to you. Yahweh will possess Judah as his portion in the Holy Land and will again choose Jerusalem. Be silent, all flesh, before Yahweh, for he is aroused from his holy habitation. In other words, he's saying, all of you with all kinds of political opinions, shut up. This tour has changed me forever. Uh, as I've never been by such a tour. The Bible is coming so real and the meaning about Israel and the people of uh, Yahweh, um, the love for the people, for Israel. And um, every day is a new journey through the Bible and see what now is still for real. So uh, it's amazing. So um, thanks. I'm very thankful to be here and um, I hope uh, everyone want to join it if we want to see uh, the nations be uh, sheep nations then we need to bless Israel and his people for you are high and lifted up yes you are high and lifted up and your glory fills your temple 